Well, well, this is Lord Andrew Adonis, and as you can see by the fucking blue tie he's wearing that has the European stars on it, if you can't. Are we really gonna make fun of a guy for his tie? Carl is gonna make fun of a guy for his tie. Jesus Christ. Maybe he should have worn a t shirt. Maybe you should have worn a t shirt with the Union Jack on it, and Carl would have been more approving of what you were wearing. Also, I like how Carl is taking credit for this somehow, because <laughs> everything has to be about him. Oh, God. I know everything has to be about him because he commented on my video the morning after I uploaded it with my 30 subscribers. He didn't even look at it. He just commented on it because it was about his candidacy. I know he Googles his own name. I know he does. That's one of the problems with Carl. Carl thinks that he's Donald Trump. He thinks that he's Donald Trump. He thinks that he can just say something really provocative and that he'll inevitably get good press coverage. But here's the thing about Donald Trump, and I'm going to let you in on a secret here. Uh, what was the very first super controversial thing that Donald Trump said? It was when he launched his campaign and he said, we have to build a wall because Mexicans are rapists. That's a policy statement, right? You can, you can infer and read what his policy is going to be because of the outrageous thing he said, right? We have to build a wall because Mexicans are rapists. Uh, other controversial things that Donald Trump does, he, he does it to coat his policy statements into a really controversial soundbite that the media will play over and over and over and over again. Uh, we have to, uh, uh, little rocket man Kim is going to have to watch himself or I'll nuke his ass, you know? Policy statement. Really badly informed and really scary if he actually puts it into action, but it's a policy statement, right? I think police should be allowed to shoot migrants at the border. Policy statement. What is the policy statement in I wouldn't even rape you? Is there a policy statement to be found in there? There's nothing. Trump is the Alan Moore of that kind of provocative media manipulation. And Carl and Dankula, they are just the Rob Liefeld to Trump's Alan Moore. They have no concept of the substance and the tactics that go into that kind of a mindset. Like, I... I I'm not saying that like Trump is like a 4D chess master, don't get me wrong, but like he knows why he's doing it, right? He knows how to say something. Like he is legitimately trying to get across like a political point. What the hell is Carl trying to accomplish? He doesn't even know because he has to ask reporters what they think his policy should be. Investment into Britain has been remarkably high, hasn't it? I love the way they frame it, despite Brexit. Maybe because of Brexit. Unit. Why would anyone want to vote, want to invest in Brexit after the vote? I can't understand that. I mean, I can understand, like, you know, the Americans wanting to get in. Because, like, you know, we had that whole big hoorah where we were like, hey, by the way, if you want this free trade agreement, you're going to have to let us chlorinate our chicken for you. And the British got really upset about that. And, you know, that's that's Brexit in a nutshell. Brexit is the UK in one of those, like, dentist chairs with a funnel in its throat and Uncle Sam just pouring cornmeal down the funnel with the chlorinated chicken because you're going to love it. You're going to love all of our shitty, shitty corn oil food. Well, but also it's about beating that Farage point, about beating the Brexit party as well. Mm, you sound scared. Because the... <laughs> Did you hear the little wound in his voice? Oh. Oh. <laughs> it was like, I was there too. You stupid lady doesn't want to talk about me. <laughs> My God, why is he so... He's so upset. He's so triggered that she wouldn't talk about UKIP because UKIP isn't the threat. <laughs> oh 
My God. Standing the reaction from the EU27, if we if Farage wins those elections, will also be a problem for us as well. I'm sure it'll be a problem for you, but it's not just Farage, is it? Let's be honest. And let's be fair. Yes, it is just Farage. It's only Farage. It is just Farage. That's the only party that matters right now, as far as Labour is concerned. Tell me why, Andrew. Come across the border to Gibraltar every day to work. We want that to continue. We want the economy to flourish. Well, you mentioned that cross frontier workers. So, do you have your also classic Carl right there? Did you catch that? He he asked him why. Why are you doing this? Why did you do this? And then he started the video again. And then immediately, uh, Donis over here was like, because lots of people in Gibraltar cross the border to work and vice versa. Like he answered the question, but he asked the question before because apparently he didn't read the, he didn't watch the video or read the article. He does that too. But like, he's asking the question that the video is about to answer him. <laughs> classic, classic Carl. The idea that you can't, you can't just get a laundry list of questions for an elected representative and check off which one has the most boxes that match yours. You know, like it's some kind of like matchmaking program, right? The UFO test is basically like, what would you do if during this term, uh, aliens landed in the capital and they wanted to speak to your government, right? It's like a situation that you can't conceive of because you have no frame of reference for it. So who do you want to be in charge when that happens is kind of how the UFO test goes when it comes. How does Carl fare against the UFO test? Carl would fail the UFO test. Uh, Carl fails the dog catcher test. Like I would not trust him to be a dog catcher. Like, geez. Right? Look at that smugly chuckles face. Tubby Kruger at his finest. It's slightly, I, I give his facial hair slightly more points. Like, you know, there's a ranking of the facial hair of the uh, UKIP shitlords. It goes uh, Dankula, Sargon, and uh, Paul Joseph Watson at the very bottom because Paul, Paul either grow the fucking beard or don't. It's been like 15 years. I have seen the most absurd things. It's like, look, that just doesn't happen. The things you're saying aren't believable. The things you're doing are just pathological. There is... I nearly need that mirror, guys. Give me all your mirrors in chat. There's no need to carry on like this, but for some reason, you can't stop yourselves. And it's like, okay, well, fine. I'm just gonna... No, there's a lot of, like... Uh... There's a lot of argument that the reactionaries tend to project a lot. That's probably true. But I also think that more importantly, it's a lack of empathy on their part. You know, like, Carl is so devoid of empathy. I think this is a trait he shares with Trump. Uh, good on you, Carl. Like, so devoid of empathy that they can't ascribe alternative motives to people, right? Like, you can't imagine a situation where someone else might decide to do something different based on the information available to them, right? Like, I think it's an empathy thing, personally. I don't think it's necessarily a projecting thing, although I guess, like, they can go hand in hand. But I really don't think that he's capable of doing it. Uh, Jacob Wall is another one of these people, right? I think it's the empathy that he just doesn't understand, right? He went to try and, uh, well, recently he tried to get a gambling ring up about elections to try and rig them or something. But what Jacob Wool was really in the news for uh, trying to pay women to say that Robert Mueller had uh, sexually assaulted them. Now, we look at that as like, He's, just, he's, like a, he's like a crazy man with newspaper clippings just stringing them together in like a motel room somewhere. But I think what Jacob Wool is thinking when he did that is that he honestly believes that 
the Me Too movement and everything like that is is people making it up just to destroy important men, right? So he thinks that he'll do the same thing. And because no one cares, if you fake that kind of thing, no one will catch him if he's faking it. Do you follow what I'm saying here? Like, like I think it's that empathy. I think it's the lack of empathy there. That it's not just projection. It's like the complete inability to attribute al alternative motives to something that you believe. I think Carl is the same way, right? Like, I don't think he's mentally capable of anticipating other people's uh, opinions or thoughts or motivations. I think he's just that dumb. Like, he, he, sees, he sees other mirror images of himself in distorted and twisted ways, but, like, that's all he can see. More and more people are starting to realize that the press is the problem. There's the political process at the moment. And honestly, I think this is a problem in many other spheres of life, like walks of life as well. But I think the reason, like, walks... Remember when you were starting this uh, campaign and you said that the press was irrelevant because you existed? I remember that, Carl. How's that working out for you? You get the Game of Thrones and all that, they start to suck. It's because of... The sort of online bubble, the, the fan... This is a video about Jeremy Corbyn, by the way. Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead. This is why they suck. <laughs> it's because of the press and their bubble. This is a video about Jeremy Corbyn. This is a video not about Carl having a meltdown in his hotel room as he contemplates the futility of his existence. And then, and the one other. The game is changing, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah, you tried that. You tried that. And yet here you are, mate. Just like, I'm going to spend nine minutes ranting about why I don't trust the press or Jeremy Corbyn or The Walking Dead or Fidel Castro or God, whatever else crosses my brain. It's about YouTube. Okay. We are an absolute clown world, and I'll just tell you what I think. And I think you're a terrible person. I think you're a terrible poli- Just that your politics is are awful. You surround yourself with awful- I like how Carl is like, jumped on the clown world thing recently. Like, Nazis have been doing it for at least, like, a year at this point. Like, I know, I know the human bobblehead, uh, Nick Fuentes, has been using clown world shit for, like, at least a year. Right? But now that the Nazis are getting tired of it, uh, it's time for the edge lords like Carl to move in, you know. Take the sloppy seconds of the Nazis. That's all Carl does.